This is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news out of Detroit Lakes on this Tuesday. Becker County authorities have released word that two bodies have been discovered at a home along County Highway 6 east of U.S. Highway 59. Now the bodies, a female and a male, were found this morning along with two deceased dogs. Autopsies and positive identification of the individuals are being done at the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office. And at this time, authorities say the incident appears to be isolated and there are no concerns for the public. In other news on this Tuesday, you're looking live in Key West, Florida, where the first effects of Hurricane Ian are being felt. Florida's governor says 2.5 million people are under evacuation orders as the hurricane reaches the southern parts of the state. The storm slammed into Cuba earlier as Category 3 hurricane and is now strengthening in the Gulf of Mexico. Reporter Jason Allen has the very latest from Tampa. High over the Gulf of Mexico, hurricane hunters flew into the eye of Hurricane Ian, a full 20 miles wide. Far below in Key West, people snapped photographs of powerful waves coming ashore. The outer bands of Hurricane Ian are pushing into South Florida as the storm heads north. It's currently on track to reach the Sarasota area as a major hurricane before slicing up and over the state. Unfortunately, conditions over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico are going to be favorable for Ian to go ahead and strengthen. Additionally, could see it get up to category four intensity. At least two and a half million people are under orders to evacuate. I think I was pretty ready when they said hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm not a trooper. All along Florida's Gulf Coast, sandbags are piled up in front of homes and businesses. Windows boarded up. Forecasters expect Ian will be a major water event. Most of the forecasts have it slowing down to almost a crawl. And what that means is it's going to dump an inordinate amount of rain. Storm surge could also be significant, up to 10 feet in the Tampa Bay area. Even in neighborhoods that are built right on the water, not everyone is leaving. They know that their homes are at 11 or 12 feet of elevation, right at the edge of what the potential storm surge could be. We caught up with the Musler family boarding up their Tampa home. They're staying because daughter Renee is scheduled to marry her fiance Weston on the beach Saturday. Right now we can't get a marriage license because the clerk's closed. So uh, we got some things to juggle. They hope the wedding will still be a go for this weekend and the state will weather the storm. Jason Allen, CBS News, Tampa, Florida. President Biden spoke today with the mayors of Tampa, St. Petersburg and Clearwater, telling all of them whatever they need to contact him directly. He also urged all those in the path of the storm to follow local evacuation orders. Fargo's Red Cross volunteer Paul Hankey is driving the emergency response vehicle IRV from Fargo to Florida. All of this ahead of Hurricane Ian, a volunteer from Fergus Falls, is riding with him. From Grand Forks today, the PD there have identified the six people who were injured in an early morning crash yesterday as affiliates of the musical artist B.O.B., who had a concert in Grand Forks on Sunday night. Authorities say 32-year-old Starsha Swift was driving the vehicle with the six passengers when she left the road, struck the median, and drove off the road before overturning onto Demers Avenue. She was arrested for DUI, DUI refusal, six counts of reckless endangerment, and driving under suspension. Two of the passengers were ejected from the vehicle, and emergency responders started CPR with them immediately. The others were treated for non-life-threatening injuries. They range in age from 24 to 36. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact police. Let's turn our attention now to the weather. Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson is in with the very latest. Hutch. Mike, thanks so much. As we uh, get a look at the latest radar data from the uh, coast of the Gulf of Mexico, just off the Keys, we're seeing the center. You can see clearly the defined eyewall of the storm as it moves to the north and east. You see the 190, it's 190 miles from where it is expected to make landfall and the outer bands are impacting southern Florida. Now, in the next 24 hours, it will be moving toward the Gulf Coast of Florida. Between Fort Myers and Tampa Bay is where our cone of uncertainty exists. This swath that you see here means it's most likely to fall within this zone here, but increasing in strength to a category four. That landfall will be sometime around that. Well, if you take a closer look right here, not far from Sarasota, Florida. So we'll keep you posted on that for us. Cold. Frost likely tonight in the Red River Valley and Lakes Country. 
freezing temperatures effectively ending the growing season. Hours of sub-freezing temperatures possible for our eastern counties. Clear and quiet right now. Temperatures range from the 50s in the greens to the 60s here in the Red River Valley, albeit low 60s. It's pretty pleasant out there and it will remain so. But it's going to be a cold night. Expect frost in Fargo, Moorhead and Grand Forks and some freezing conditions for our eastern counties. We'll highlight all of that, Mike, coming up here in just a few more moments. A lot of ground to cover, so to speak. Indeed. All yes. right, thanks. We learned today the name of the bus driver involved in last week's crash in rural Cass County. Investigators say 62-year-old Andy Bunn of Alice was behind the wheel. He and seven students from the Enderlin Area School District were on that bus when it crashed through a guardrail and into the Maple River. Two students were thrown from the bus, taken to local hospitals by ambulance. One student had to be airlifted, but all are expected to be okay. Authorities are still looking for what caused that crash. Those traveling in downtown Moorhead will be noticing a new safety warning. Moorhead police teamed up with students last week to stencil rail safety messages on the sidewalks to help spread awareness for Rail Safety Week. Police report that a person or vehicle is hit by a train every three hours. Over 50 lawmakers throughout the United States are sounding the alarm over a Chinese-based manufacturer that bought property in Grand Forks, saying it's an alarming development for national security. The Fufeng Group paid $2.3 million to purchase the 300 acres of land just 12 miles away from the Grand Forks Air Force Base. In a letter, lawmakers state that the Grand Forks Air Force Base has exceptional intelligence intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities, making the recently purchased land the deal location to closely monitor and intercept military activity. Now the letter is being led by Republican Carlos Jimenez of Florida. The two candidates for North Dakota's lone U.S. House seat will debate tonight. Incumbent Representative Kelly Armstrong, a Republican, squares off against an independent challenger, Cara Mund. The debate will be watched, or can be watched, at 7 tonight on Prairie Public. Valley News Live will have coverage tonight on Valley News Live at 9 and at 10. The committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack has delayed its hearing set for tomorrow after new video surfaced showing Roger Stone laying out plans to keep then-President Donald Trump in power. This comes amid jury selection for five members of the Oath Keepers militia for their actions on January 6th. And all of this... As NBC learned, leaders of the Secret Service confiscated the cell phones of 24 agents involved in the agency's response to the Capitol siege. Reporter Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. In a late announcement, the January 6th committee moving to delay what was expected to be its final investigative hearing tomorrow. It comes as we're learning of new evidence that will likely be presented. Video clips from the Danish documentary The Storm Foretold, showing longtime Trump ally Roger Stone predicting violence and saying months before the 2020 election that then President Trump would use armed guards and loyal judges to fight the results if he lost. If the electors show up at the, at the Electoral College, armed guards will throw them out. I'm the president. You. You're not stealing Florida, you're not stealing Ohio. I'm challenging all of it, and the judges we're going to are judges I appointed. It comes as jury selection begins today in the most high profile case yet against those accused of attacking the Capitol on January 6th. The leader of the far right Oath Keepers militia group, Stuart Rhodes, and four other members facing charges of seditious conspiracy, accused of trying to overthrow the government by force. They face up to 20 years in prison. According to the allegations in the indictment, there were communications in advance of the attack that this was a premeditated plan to stop the certification of a presidential election. Defense attorneys argue they were not there to storm the Capitol, but were waiting for then-President Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act. And in yet another thread, NBC News has learned leaders of the Secret Service confiscated the cell phones of 24 agents who responded to the Capitol siege as part of a criminal probe into agents missing text messages during the time Trump supporters were overrunning the Capitol. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. A new Monmouth University poll finds nearly a third of Americans still hold the widely debunked belief that President Biden did not legitimately win the 2020 election. 
The look of Fargo's airport will be changing. Upgrade plans have been unveiled and you are being asked to give your opinion before work begins. As presented, the price tag for the remodeling would cost over $120 million and would take nearly four years to complete. But developers say the improvements would create additional gates, push back ticketing desks for and provide more room for food and retail shops for passengers already through security. Now there's going to be another presentation of what's on the table now. It'll be held tonight on the second floor of Hector Airport beginning in less than an hour. Stick around later on Valley News Live at 5. How much more you'll be paying to heat your home this winter? If you joined us on Valley News Live last night, we talked about the chance for some 20s this morning and indeed 28 that low temperature in Bemidji, 32 in Grand Forks, 30 in Hallock. Even colder weather is expected tonight. We'll have details on a freeze warning and a frost advisory, but a warm up as well. All of that is coming up. Next.